Your profile is like an online resume builder where you enter information at the start of your program and you add and update this information over time. Eventually, your profile will be sent to sites where you are placed as a way for them to get acquainted with you. Your program administrators will also be able to share your profile with sites as well. It is important to make a great first impression, so take your time when filling this out to ensure your information is accurate. In this video, we'll take a look at each section of the profile, explain why each section is important, and illustrate what kind of information it should contain. Please note that all student information displayed in this tutorial is randomly generated mock student information for educational purposes only. To access your profile, log into the system and click on the Edit Profile hyperlink from the left-hand side of the new student dashboard. You can also access your profile by clicking on the hamburger icon in the upper left-hand corner of the page and selecting the Profile option. If you are using the old student dashboard, select the Profile tile from your dashboard. If you would like to switch from the new student dashboard to the old student dashboard, deactivate the new dashboard bit at the top of the page. If you would like to switch to the new student dashboard from the old student dashboard, activate the switch to new bit at the top of the page. Within your profile, on the top left-hand side of the screen, you will see your name, email address, preferred pronouns, phone number, and cohort information, as well as a profile picture if you have already added one. You'll first land on the Academics tab where you will see an overview of information entered by your program. This is a view-only section, where you can review items like enrollment, academic standing, program requirements you must complete before graduating, student advisors, any attestations you have signed, and any notes or documents your program has shared with you. In the Program Requirements section, you can view the pending, placed and completed program requirements assigned to you. Pending program requirements are those which you will still need to complete. Placed program requirements are those that will be completed by your current placements, and completed program requirements are those that you have already completed. Click on the Expand button next to a status to view the related requirements. Please note that not all of these sections will appear on your end if your program has not yet created them. Click on the Profile tab, the first thing we will upload is your photo. Click on the pencil icon on your empty profile picture and then click Upload Image to upload a clear professional photo of yourself. If after uploading your picture, you realize you need to remove it, click the Delete button. You could then upload a new image. You are now ready to move on to the rest of your profile. First, we have the Demographic Information section. A majority of this information is only accessible to you and your program. The only information within this section that is shared with sites is your first name, preferred name, last name, preferred pronouns, and school email address. Click on the pencil icon, and a drawer will appear. Using this drawer, you will enter this information. Note that, fields which require information to be entered will be marked with a red asterisk. Click Save once you are done. Keep in mind that you can stop at any point and come back and finish this later. Just be sure to save your progress when editing any section. In the Personal Contact section, you will provide your cell phone and home phone number along with your personal email address. Click Save once you are done. The Emergency Contact section allows you to provide contact information for a parent, relative, or friend who can be contacted in the event of an emergency. Click on the plus icon to add an entry and fill out the necessary information. To modify information for an existing emergency contact, click on the drop-down arrow and then click on the pencil icon for that specific contact. Your program may build a questionnaire for you to complete within your profile. This will be in the Additional Profile Details section. To complete the questionnaire, click on the Get Started button. A drawer will open listing any questions your program has added for you. Please note you must answer any required questions, which are marked by an asterisk, before you can save. Up next, the Address Information section collects both your current and permanent addresses. Click on the pencil icon to add or modify both. Then again, you'll click Save once you're done. When sharing your profile, you'll have the option to indicate whether you would like to share your personal contact, emergency contact, or address information with sites. The Summary section will ask you for a summary statement. Here you will write a brief statement about who you are and why you have chosen this field or any other question your school may have posed. Pretend you have two minutes to pitch yourself to the site. 
you'll then add information about your areas of strength and any areas for improvement. And once done you'll go ahead and save. The Areas of Professional Interest section allows you to indicate what settings or specialties you are interested in. This gives your school and your site a better understanding of you, however, it does not guarantee that you will be placed in the settings or specialties. Click on the pencil icon to add your interests. You'll see a list of settings and specialties that you can select from. If there are options that you'd like to add that are not listed, click Other. This will allow you to enter your own interests. Save once you're done. If you'd like to add a resume, cover letter, or any other file to share with sites, you can add that here. You can always drag and drop your file or click on this section to browse your computer to upload your files. If you'd like to remove a file you have previously uploaded, simply click on the trash bin icon. Also, be sure to note the supported file formats and size limits. The Education section lets you list all your previously attained degrees. Click on the plus icon to enter a new degree and its details. Once you've added all the information, you'll want to go ahead and save it. You can also edit any previously added information by clicking on the pencil icon. If you'd like to delete an entry, first open the item for editing, then go ahead and click on the vertical ellipses, then select Delete. The Work Experience section allows you to list your paid or volunteer experiences. Click on the plus icon and select the type of work entry you'd like to add either employment or career related. You'll then add all the details for that work experience. There's no need to enter every job you've held, instead add as many as you feel are relevant towards your goal of becoming a healthcare professional. Just like the other sections, if you'd like to change an existing entry, click on the pencil icon, make the necessary changes, and then click save. You can add membership details to your profile as well. Click on the plus icon, add any relevant information, and then save it. If you have any licensure details you would like to provide, click on the plus icon and enter your information here. After this, be sure to save. The Skills and Accomplishments section will house several other categories you can utilize to build your profile. Once you click on the plus icon, you'll see the full list. You can add continuing education details, details of publications you have written, any language skills other than English that you can read or speak, certifications you may have, honors and awards you may have received, and you'll have an open space where you can enter other scholarly activities that don't fall under any other previous sections. If any of the above sections of your profile are left blank they will not be displayed on your profile when it is shared with sites. Once you have completed all sections of your profile, your program may request for you to review and sign off on it. An attestation will be assigned to you. To sign off on this attestation, navigate to your dashboard. If you are using the new student dashboard, click on the Complete Profile Attestations hyperlink. A window will open showing you all of your pending profile attestations. The due date for this attestation will be displayed below. Click on the I Agree button if you choose to agree to this statement. If you are using the old student dashboard, your pending profile attestations will be displayed at the top of the page. With this, your program will require you to sign off on your profile. Make sure to carefully review your entire profile, ensure it doesn't contain any errors, and that it provides a professional impression before you click the I Agree button. The Profile section is a great source of information for your school and clinical sites. Feel free to make changes at any time. Exat Prism also offers the option to download your profile. If you would like to do this, select the Download Profile option from the upper right-hand Share Profile drop-down menu. This will download a detailed PDF with all the information from your Academics tab. If you would like to share your profile, click on the Share Profile drop-down then select the Share Profile option. Check out our Sharing Your Profile instructional video for more detailed instructions. We hope your profile showcases your interests and qualifications and that it serves as a beneficial tool throughout your clinical education experience. Thank you for watching our Completing the Student Profile tutorial. Please take the time to check out our other helpful Exat Prism tutorials.